Polaroids. Let's talk about them. What's up, everybody? Thank you for coming by again. I appreciate it. Today, I'm gonna to be doing my review of my Polaroid Impulse. I know that I held the SX-70 at the beginning of this. I found a fantastic deal on an SX-70, and it was just too good to be true, unfortunately. It was 25 bucks. The seller said it was in perfect condition, and I was excited to get it. Uh, it finally showed up, and I put a fresh pack of SX-70 film, and it didn't spit the black card out, so I just let them know, hey, this thing arrived, DOA, put a fresh pack of film, and it's just, I mean, nothing happening it's not clicking it doesn't look like there's any rust in the contact so it might be an electronic issue in the inside but unfortunately it doesn't work today we're going to be checking out my impulse which i actually think is a sleeper polaroid the stuff i've been getting has been primarily pretty solid i'm really impressed with it and like i said in my last video i got it for five bucks at my local thrift store this is actually the very base model it doesn't have the sonar focus or anything like that but it does have exposure compensation it does have a flash so that's also really cool if you'd like a more in-depth video on my impulse, I'd love to do it. Just let me know in the comments below. So recently I was invited by my friends, David and Chris. I met them through networking on Instagram and stuff like that. They, they're local and they already go around and just shoot together all the time. And they finally invited me along. And we happened to go to LA during the Super Bowl weekend. So it was a little hectic. They had a friend out that was gonna meet us and we were gonna take pictures of it. I've been shoot the entire thing on my Polaroid. They were setting her up and posing here and I was just firing off of the Polaroid. So I'm gonna be reviewing some of these photos and tell you guys a little bit behind them and what I was thinking. I really wanted to capture old classic cars. When you think low riders and you think old Cadillacs and old Impalas, you think LA, right? I thought I would see a lot more of these. The whole day that we were in downtown LA, we saw one one classic car parked and i was peeping every parking lot we came across we saw this real nice chevy i took two pictures of it one um the camera kind of froze on me i kept hitting the shutter and it didn't go off very well i kept tapping it and then i looked at the camera and tapped it again and it shot one and the frame's a little off but it's still cool but i definitely needed to take another one so i took one of those these ones and it came out so crisp i like getting these side profiles of old classic cars i don't know why it's just kind of my thing I feel like getting half the grill with the lights and stuff like that is a nice profile on a classic car. Kind of a nice profile on any car, really. Just kind of the look I like to do with old with cars in general. And I'm very happy with this picture. So I'm still getting used to the hang of things with this Polaroid. I thought, you know what, a neon sign, again, that vintage vibe look would be great for a Polaroid. And I took this arrow neon sign. Um, it came out blurry, but I think that kind of like gives off that Polaroid vibe where things are just imperfectly perfect. And so I'm not mad at it. I do wish I hit focus on it, but live and learn, right? I'm having a real hard time composing my image correctly. The viewfinder is to the left while the actual sensor for the Polaroid is in the center. So when I think something's centered, it's actually slightly to the left. And I'm seeing that constantly when I'm taking a picture, I think I have it framed up and composed perfectly. But when I get the image, I forget that it's slightly a little off to the left. Just to give you a visual. So this is the viewfinder. This is what I peek my eye out and try and line up my composition. But this is where it actually takes the picture. So when I compose my shot for this, it's gonna be slightly off center because the camera's shooting here. So it's something that I gotta really get used to and why I was really excited for this SX-70 because this SX-70, the viewfinder's in the center and it comes out through there. So anything I center up perfectly in the center here is gonna come out the way that I see in the viewfinder. So that's why I was most excited for this camera and really upset that it doesn't work. Anyway, back on topic. This shot right here, I took of a building that I saw in downtown. The composition was nailed perfectly and the focus is tack sharp. Blows my mind, almost like I took it with a digital camera because of how sharp this looks. This is one of my favorite photos that I took that day. Colors, the contrast, everything about this image is just perfect in my eyes. Next up is actually my all time favorite photo I've taken on a Polaroid to this day. There was this tourist that we saw. She was just taking pictures with her friend on a little Samsung point and shoot. There's traffic going on behind her and she had such a nice dress on. I shot my shot and I asked, hey, do you mind if I take a picture? She just smiled and said, of course, that'd be fine. And so I nailed off this picture. I love the coloring. I have this weird 
take where on the same film pack, some of the pictures come out colder and some of the pictures come out warmer. Does anybody know why that happens? And this one I think nailed perfectly. It's nice and warm and has a really vintage vibe to it. Uh, I do wish I centered her a little better. Again, it's trying to work on that, but I love it. I think it's great. So after that, we finally got a call back from the talent and said they were about 10 minutes away. So we decided to wait for them at a Starbucks. At the Starbucks, they had this cool little planter thing that was really symmetrical and I wanted to take a picture of it. Unfortunately, I didn't know that it wasn't hanging on my neck. So when I moved and dragged the, the Polaroid with me, it just came crashing to the floor because I thought I had it on my neck and I didn't. So it jammed up after that and it spit out these cool looking like messed up films. I was worried I was going to just ruin the camera at this point. So I decided to just take the film pack out and put it back in and ruined another shot. So I have just a blank spot too. You only have like seven shots. I just destroyed half the pack because I dropped the camera one time. But anyways, I finally got the shot that I wanted. I'm not too impressed with it. It actually isn't very good and on the Polaroid at all. But like I said, the symmetry caught my eye and I wanted to capture it. And I'm not mad about it, but I don't think it's a good picture. I don't know why I tend to do shots like this. I don't know if it goes back to my Tumblr days and seeing them all the time on Tumblr, but whenever I see a crosswalk, I have to shoot it. Really no reason why, but this is one of the ones I'm talking about. It came out really cold. If you know why some shots in the same film pack come out cold while others come out warmer, please let me know in the comments below. I'd really like to hear about it. Shooting a portrait session with a Polaroid is a little challenging. Maybe one or two shots came out pretty cool, but for the majority, I'm not that impressed with, but I'm glad that I did it. So this was the very first shot I got of the model. She's just at a corner and you can see the urban area behind her. I just snapped a picture of her. This one's another one that came out cool. You'll see the other ones that come out warm and it's still the same film pack. If you know why that happens, let me know in the comments below. Because if there's a way I can physically manipulate it, I would like to. I would like to know which shots I can forcibly make warm and which shots I can forcibly make cooler. So anyone that follows my photography knows I love to shoot into the sun. This is a little harder with film. I don't know if it's because it's 35 millimeter or if it's because of the coatings on the glass. The images get really blown out and lose a lot of the detail. And so I'm learning that the hard way, but I'm not entirely mad at this shot either. So again, you see the sun flare in it. The only downside is that everything else is underexposed. She luckily is still somewhat exposed, but everything else in the background is entirely gone. But I like the nice little flare to it. And I think that's pretty cool. This one was one that, you know, conceptually sounded cool, but when executed, didn't come out the way I wanted it to. So there was this nice archway. I thought that I could frame her up under that arch, get this really cool, perfectly composed image. Unfortunately, I missed focus and so she's really soft. I'm not mad that I tried it because I think the concept still sounded cool, but just the execution wasn't there, unfortunately. Here's another one that's the exact same problem. There was a square cut out on this wall, making it a wide shot where we get the entire square and she's just centered. I missed focus terribly. It's a blurry mess, not inspired at all. So this one's another one that I'm not too proud of, but the concept still would have been cool if I had nailed it. This one I really like a lot. I think the sun's hitting her perfectly. I think that the background is perfectly still focused as well as she is. And so you get a lot of detail and the contrast between the cold background and the warm model uh, really, really shines in this. And it's, uh, it's one of my favorite shots of the day too. All of this is really teaching me to take time. So coming from entirely digital, I skipped film right off the bat. I'm having a lot of fun learning as I go now. What I know about photography now, but applying it to an older medium. You get used to not necessarily spraying and praying, but you know, you try one concept, look at it. If it doesn't work, you adjust. And you can't really do that with film or it gets really costly. And then lastly, the very last picture we took of the day, um, she had changed her wardrobe. The concept for this was to try and get her reflection in the window of the building. So I think if I would have nailed that, the exposure correctly, and you could see her shadow a little better, this would have been a great shot. But unfortunately, again, I missed focus and it's underexposed. So you can't really see her shadow. So basically after I take these photos, I immediately take them home. I have this gorilla pod that hangs over my MC lights that I'm holding back there. I just have them set up to light up the Polaroid. I just have 
my phone leaning over it and I just take a picture of it and then crop it out afterwards. If you guys would like to see how I process my Polaroids, let me know in the comments below and I'll show you guys. Let me go over some pros and cons I came across Polaroid shooting out in public. So the biggest hassle to me is how bulky these things are. They're really big. And so having to carry this around with you or hanging from your neck or from your hand, it's gonna bang up a couple of times, which is ultimately the reason why I really wanted this SX-70. It kind of eliminates that bulkiness process because look at how it tears down. Look at, literally fits in my back pocket. This really eliminates a huge part of my problem that I have with a Polaroid because I can put it in my back pocket and when I see something cool, I just pop it back up and it's ready to go. Secondly, I don't know if it's just because my impulse is older, but I did have a misfiring issue where I had to tap it a few times for it to pop off and I would look at it and then keep pressing and then I would waste a whole slide just because they didn't register that I was trying to take a picture. I wasted a lot of film because of that, which reaches me to my next point. These packs of Polaroid film are like 20 bucks a pop. You're only gonna get eight shots out of these. The older Polaroids register 10 shots. The new film slides are a little thicker, so only eight fit in the pack. Like it'll tell you you have five shots left when really you only have three or it'll say you have three shots left and you really only have one. It's just something to be mindful of. My pros for shooting Polaroid, hands down has to be the vibes. There's just something about shooting in film that just is iconic. I've been shooting digital for over 10 years. These quirky, out of focus, poorly composed shots of a Polaroid hit different. And that's really the only way I can explain it. My second favorite pro is there's nothing better coming from digital than taking a picture and instantly getting it. A physical copy of what you just snapped is an insane feeling. You hear photographers like Peter McKinnon talking about the gift of photography, being able to snap a really cool Polaroid of something that means something to someone, but the fact that you can take that picture and hand it to that person right then and there, there really is no words for that feeling. It's fantastic to say the least. So that's my absolute favorite thing about shooting with Polaroids. All right, guys, that just about wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching it. If you enjoyed and want to come along this film journey with me, uh, I'm going to be reviewing my Canon AE-1 program that we shot and tested in Palm Springs with, again, David, Chris, and a buddy, Jake, that I mentioned in my first video. So if you guys want to check that out, please subscribe and hit the bell for those notifications. And uh, thanks for watching.